Hi, this is part five of module four, supply and demand, the final part in this module. A number of factors affect the supply of healthcare professionals across the country and that also affect the demand for healthcare services. It's important to recognise these to ensure that appropriate planning mechanisms are put in place so that the health workforce is adequate enough to meet demand. Your first task here for this section is to read the paper by Siegel and Bolton and answer the following questions. One, list the various factors that influence health workforce supply. Two, what is the difference between health workforce demand and underlying need and which of the two should drive policy? Three, list the various factors that influence health workforce demand as opposed to the first one which was supply. And four, how do Siegel and Bolton suggest that supply and demand issues should be addressed? Particularly look at the summary section on page six to seven for the answer to that. Your next task is to watch the video entitled Primary Health Care Impact of Population Aging, which is delivered by Dr. Michael Taylor. Um, you'll find this in the, you'll find this video um, in the playlist for this module, but also you'll have access to it on um, LMS. Reflect on the issue of, a, of the ageing population on Medicare's chronic disease program and how this ageing is likely to affect other programs or the demand on allied health professionals such as orthoptists. And we'll move immediately also on to task three. So what I'd like you to think about is that balancing supply and demand is complex, particularly because there are various consequences, both financial and other consequences, which are associated with either under or oversupplying of the workforce. What I'd like you to do is read issues in health workforce supply and demand and balancing supply and demand in Chapter 4 of Duckett and Wilcox and then list the costs of over and under supply as is identified by Duckett and Wilcox. Here's a simple table to help you to organise your answers. Let's consider now workforce supply. The key individuals who supply the health workforce are graduates of educational programs and internationally trained health professionals. Whilst internationally trained professionals can provide significant growth and increase supply, there are several ethical issues related to this recruitment. And I just want you to have a think about that just for half a minute before you move on to the next slide. Task four will consider that um, international recruitment in more detail. So read Influencing Workforce Supply in Chapter 4 of Ducat and explain why international recruitment is critical to workforce supply in Australia. Task 5 continues the theme of internationally recruited workforce. So now watch the video titled An Ethical Approach to Health Workforce Sustainability, which is delivered by Professor James Buchan. You might also choose to watch the recent ABC 7.30 report titled Australia Stands Accused of Poaching African Doctors, which is also related to this topic, but that's an optional video. You'll find it in the playlist, however. Then consider these two issues. What proportion of the Australian health workforce is derived from overseas trained graduates? And how does this compare to other countries? And two, explain the ethical dilemma related to international recruitment. Now we come to workforce shortage. The 2006 census data indicates that there were approximately 360,000 individuals employed in the health workforce, which makes up about 3.5% of the employed Australian workforce. Well, it made up that percentage at the time. Whilst it's generally recognised that in Australia there is a health workforce shortage, it's important to note that this might be an acute issue for some professions, but not necessarily for others, where there could be an oversupply or the demand is currently being met. So it's therefore not only important to look at health workforce data overall, but also in relation to specific professions. For task six, I'd like you to read chapter three, Characteristics of Current Health Workforce in Australia, the KMG, KPMG report, and answer the following questions. 
One, describe the distribution of the workforce in relation to differences between doctors, nurses and allied health or other professionals. What are the projections for the health workforce into the future? What issues regulate the geographic distribution? And discuss how Generation Y may influence the workforce in the future. So for more information regarding specific characteristics of allied health professionals, have a look at Chapter 3 of the AHWAC 2006 report, which is some optional extra reading for you if you want to get a better grasp of the concept. And we'll launch straight into Task 7 now. In 2009, the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, AIHW, released a report on the iHealthcare workforce providing data on the sector. So you need to do two things here. Firstly, read the key findings section of the AIHW report on page four and answer the following questions. One, which six professions are included as being part of the iHealthcare labor force? Two, what proportion of eye health care workforce includes orthoptists? Three, which of the six professions has the greatest labour force and why do you think this is the case? Then, I want you to review tables 16 and 17 of the same report on page 23 to 24 and answer these questions. One, which states have a significant shortage of orthoptists? Can you suggest why this might be the case? Two, what proportion of orthoptists work in regional settings? Three, consider what initiatives could increase supply in the areas of shortage. Read options for addressing a workforce imbalance in Ducat Chapter 4, page 94. And now for Task 8. As you've noted in earlier readings, government policies can have a significant impact on supply of health professionals. In Australia, a number of initiatives have recently been developed to address workforce issues. Read Chapter 3 Workforce of the Commonwealth of Australia National Health and Hospitals Network report and answer the following question. List the types of initiative and investment the government has committed to ensure that the health workforce meets the future demands. You've now completed all the tasks for part five and we're nearly towards the end of this section but there are a couple of other things just to consider before we finish and I'd like to start by looking at planning for workforce needs. The government had established something called the Health Workforce Australia or HWA and this was part of an investing in the future initiative and it was going to be Australia's first health workforce planning agency which it was. This agency was a national body which was responsible for planning the long-term workforce requirements of Australia's health and hospital system. However, in 2014, um, as part of the budget, the Australian government announced the closure of HWA or Health, health Workforce Australia with essential functions transferring over to the Department of Health. So we saw a closure of HWA on the 6th of August in 2014 and funding agreements and other business functions are being managed now by the Department of Health, which can be contacted by using their online inquiries form at the um, online address that you can see there. This brings us to the conclusion for Module 4. Module 5 is the, five mod the final module and will explore developing efficiencies in healthcare.